Hey all, Frozen Foxy here. I'm not really a big fan of April Fools, so instead, I've decided I'll teach you about the new editing tools that I've been using for the past year or two. A lot of these editing tools I learned about from somethingawful.com, so a big thanks to their members and the tutorials that they have there for uh, helping me expand my knowledge to new tools like these. And now I want to share those with you. I still use Fraps for most games, so nothing has changed there. However, I have expanded to using AVI Synth or AviSynth, Virtual Dub Mod rather than just Virtual Dub, and MeGUI to work a bit smarter and faster on videos as something awful suggests. All of these tools are completely free, just like Virtual Dub, so the only thing I purchased to start recording games was Fraps. I also use OpenOffice Calc spreadsheets to help me track where a video starts and ends to to make editing a long series of videos into parts easier, since my memory is about as good as a goldfish when it comes to tracking a bunch of numbers. You can use Microsoft Excel or any other spreadsheet program to similar effect to assist you, but I like free stuff, so why stop at my editing tools when OpenOffice is free too? This of course is optional, but I recommend it to help you out. This part will be a bit of a boring math-based video, since I'll first talk about how to set up OpenOffice Calc to track video times easier. If you skip it, you might be lost if I reference it in the next parts, but it's technically optional to use a spreadsheet to track your video times. Anyway, I have eight columns in my spreadsheet that track the total time of a group of videos captured by Fraps, the end time when I cut for the end of an episode in that group, the final video length in that group, an equation to determine almost exactly where the next video will start called new start, an equation to determine if there's enough time for a full episode with the selected video group called minus start, a number of videos column used to track how many videos are in a selected group for memory purposes only, a blank column to let me know when I've checked each video to be sure that they mesh together in order, as well as writing notes for anything that I need to do such as when I need to censor for thief videos, and a part number column to track which part I'm currently editing to produce later. A video group is a selection of a number of video parts from Fraps such as selecting these six videos here. The total time of this group is displayed at the bottom as 13 minutes 54 seconds. This is what I use for the total time column for doing my calculations. To make sure the column headings are always visible, select cell A2 then click window, freeze. If you scroll now the rows will change below but the column headings will remain at the top. Once I've written all of these columns into the top row and froze it, I format the first five columns and two rows to take time inputs. To do that, just highlight all cells that you're interested in and click Format Cells. Look for Category Time and select the Minute colon Second format followed by clicking OK. Next, I'll go to the first row in the new start column to enter an equation. For the first row, this is the final video time minus in parentheses the total time of the video video group minus the end time of the edited video part, which is wherever I cut the video. I only want to subtract whatever is left over after the end time, rather than both the total time and the end time, which would give me a negative number if we were working with normal numbers, or a wrong time in this case since there are no negative time values. By subtracting whatever is left over after the end time in the video group from the final video, I'll find out where the next part begins for the next video group for editing. Every new start row after the first row must also include subtracting the previous new start time from the total time in the parentheses, as this time is taken away from whatever is left over as well when determining the new start for subsequent parts. The minus start column has no equation on the first row because no part exists before the first part you are editing, which means nothing needs to be subtracted. For subsequent minus start rows, the total time minus the previous previous row's new start time will let us know if enough time is available in the video group to support a full Let's Play episode depending on the general length we have selected. With the equation's input, you can highlight the first five cells in the second row. Then click and drag the small square in the lower right down to pull the cell formatting and equations down to lower rows. OpenOffice Calc will automatically increment the cell numbers in the equation for you when you do this, so you do 
not have to rewrite the equations once you put them in. Using the example of 13 minutes 54 seconds for a video group from earlier, let's input the time into the total time column on the first row, keeping in mind that you must enter zero for the hour before entering the minutes and seconds values, and a colon must be used between each value. Next, we'll check the time of the final video in this group by selecting it and looking at the bottom of the window. This video is 1 minute 14 seconds, which we will enter into the final video column. The end time will be however long the final edited video turns out to be. For this example, let's say the video is cut at 13 minutes exactly. Remember that you must input a zero for seconds even if seconds are not used. This will populate our new start equation with where we should go to in the next video part to cut the content present in the previous episode, give or take about two seconds, due to the millisecond granularity that we're leaving out here. The end time can be adjusted depending on where you end up stopping, so that you can keep the value more or less on track for the next video. When selecting a new video group, we must take into account the fact that 20 seconds is missing from the video group as it is the new start value. If we want to be able to create a new 13 minute part, we must select a video group with at least 13 minutes 20 seconds to exceed that missing piece we'll be editing out. The minus start column will populate with whatever is left over in the video group after we enter the total time to let us know if more than 13 minutes exists to make it a usable selection. If it's not enough time, just add another video to the group, change the total time to reflect the addition, and look at the minus start column to be sure it will work. Usually this is pretty easy to eyeball without thinking much, but the minus start is our safety net in case we didn't think about the numbers correctly. This concludes the general setup of the OpenOffice Calc spreadsheet. In the next part, I'll go over using AviSynth and Virtual Dub Mod to script all of your video parts together into one file followed by cutting them into several Let's Play parts. See y'all then!